Ahoy hoy neighborinos, just letting you know that you can pre-order my book Simpson Secret on Amazon today. Their link is in the description below. Duffman is perhaps one of the more peculiar residents of Springfield and that's really saying something. He's basically a walking shill, a muscular mascot for the Duff Corporation, who occasionally pops in to shout some very catchy slogans. Are you ready to get duffed? Yeah! Referring to himself in third person constantly, and it's very well known that multiple actors have played him, many of whom have died under very mysterious circumstances. Duffman can never die, only the actors who play him. Oh yeah! So in this video today, we'll dive into his comic book origins and explore the death of each Duffman. I'm Lydia from The Simpsons Theory, and let's dive into the enigma of Duffman. Oh yeah, and very quickly, if that subscribe button is red, do me a favour and go and tap it. Not only does it really help the channel, but it also lets you know when I've released a brand new video. Plus, we're nearly at 100k subscribers, so come on guys, we can do this. So to help me talk about the awesomeness that is Duffman, I've invited Dave Lee and his amazing Australian accent to go and give me a hand. Over on his channel, he posts daily cartoon news, as well as cartoon evolution videos, from Bugs Bunny to SpongeBob SquarePants. So, welcome to the show, Dave. Thanks, Lydia, and g'day. When you invited me onto your Simpsons channel, the last character I expected to be talking about was Duffman. But when I looked more into this spandex-clad bloke, the more interested I became. Duffman was based on Budweiser's former mascot, Budman. From his red costume, cape and fetching sunglasses, you can tell where the Simpsons creators got their inspiration. Nothing beats a bird. Man. Duffman strangely has his own in-universe origins, as seen in the one-shot comic Duffman Adventures No. 1. In a comic that rivals Radioactive Man, the story starts with a can of Duff floating in space, and just like the Green Lantern Ring, searches out for the Chosen One to be the ultimate party animal. Okay, not exactly like the Green Lantern, but you get it. The can finds Kyle McCaggart and gives him the party power of the Duff Man. He is then transported to Planet Oya and meets the Guardians of the Party, who introduce him to the Duff Man Corps, a force dedicated to bringing hope to the hopeless by throwing epic rages throughout the universe. Kyle's training begins, which includes dancing, beer pong and chugging down, but he struggles to take on the enormous responsibility of the Duff Man. But just before he was about to give up, the villainous Venostro arrived to be the ultimate buzzkill, ruining the party with sophisticated music and intellectual conversation. But learning what it really means to party, Kyle gets the Duff groove and throws an awesome rager. Reciting the sacred words of the Duff Corps, he says, Through the flattest beer, when times get tough, my arms are forever buff. Let those who chug inferior stuff beware my power, the suds of Duff. And Kyle takes his rightful place as Duff Man. Oh yeah. And that there completes the one and only issue of The Adventures of Duff Man. And I don't know about you, but I think Disney Plus should totally make this into a series. It would be an absolute beauty. Other than this, he's also appeared in a few other issues of The Simpsons comics, such as the time he temporarily hung up his cape so he could finally achieve his lifelong dream of being a sheep shepherd. But he soon came back to don his Duff utility belt when he realised that, like most dreams, it turned out to be really boring. Thanks again for having me on Lydia, it's been an absolute pleasure. But now, I can't stop thinking about a cold, refreshing Duff. So I'm off to get onto my kangaroo and head off to Universal Studios to spend some cold, hard dollary dues on a pint. See you later. <laughs> Thanks Dave. If the Duff Corporation wants to be honest and transparent, they would have a mascot representative of their customer, like this guy. And not the muscular physique of Duffman. And to ensure that those sexy sexy six packs don't turn into, well, a beer keg, Duffman is forbidden to drink the Duff stuff he promotes. This may also be because the very first Duffman Joe died of liver failure. 
Yes, yes, being a tough man is a very dangerous occupation. So let's go through those poor old actors who have played this legendary role and how they have died. The second tough man was a guy named Larry, first bursting into Moe's Tavern to give out free beer. We next see him hosting the best bartender competition to win the chance of starring in the Duff calendar. Most is like won the challenge and this didn't please Vain Vain Duff Man. That's a mug you don't want to chug. Knock it off, Larry. So much so that on the release of the calendar, they hid Moe's mug under several layers of stickers. Shocked to see just how ugly he was, this provoked Moe to go and get some plastic surgery done. But do not worry viewers, Mo did get his revenge in the end. Mo plastered a giant sticker over Larry's face, causing him to suffocate. Or so it's believed, so let's add that to the kill count. But luckily for Duff, there's always a spare blonde muscle man to jump right in. And so was quickly replaced by Sid, who was always by his boss's side. Can it, Sid? Aren't you can it, Howard? Unlike Larry, Sid could actually think for himself. When Homer exposed that the Duff Corporation was moving the baseball team to Albuquerque, Homer pleaded with the Duff man to help him out. He then picked up the CEO, Howard K. Duff, and tossed him over the fence. Oh yeah. Come on, you can tell me, is that getting old yet? Later on, Sid was almost killed by none other than Frank Grimes Jr. aiming for Homer. He survived that time, but eventually, like all Duffman, he too would soon meet his grisly, grisly death. When Homer tried to get a baseball player back with his ex to win a big game, he hijacked the Duff blimp and tied Sid to it. Homer wrote a message to Buck, supposedly from his lover, expressing her love, causing him to hit the baseball straight into the blimp and so causing it to crash to the floor. Luckily, Homer managed to escape, but poor old Sid was left behind and wasn't so lucky. But again, the Solar Stuff Corporation had another chump right on speed dial. Three Duff men are working the game tonight. We see the death of another Duff man in a very quick flashback, skinny dipping with Homer. When he finds out that there is no more beer, he says that he heard that the sensation of drowning can make you feel drunk. So he quite possibly drowned trying to reach this high. As all the Duffman look identical, it's super hard to try and separate them. But one other Duffman we know by name is Barry. Plain old Barry Duffman. Oh yeah. When this Duff man was replaced by Santa's little helper to be the new mascot, Barry was forced to give up his trademark hat and sunglasses and taught maths to homeless people. But even though he was living perhaps a more wholesome and independent life, he craved for his alter ego. So along with the Simpsons, he devised a plan to get his job back and their doggy back home. During a Duff Beer PR event, Homer pretended to drown, knowing that Santa's little help was far too scared to come and help him. So Barry arrives to save the day, but as soon as he sees the shark, he wimps out. Are you there, God? It's me, Duff Man! But instead of biting into Homer's butt, the shark bit into a beer keg, causing it to get drunk. Seeing how popular the shark was, the CEO quickly made it their new mascot, Duff McShark. Despite being replaced by a dog and a shark, Barry did get his beloved job back, and he jumped through all kind of hoops to try and please his overlords at Duff, including masquerading as Lady Duff, in order to sell more beer to women. He also dated Booberella for a PR stunt and is actually bisexual, previously in a relationship with a man named Grady, and it was later revealed that he had an estranged daughter. And now, Duffman has a dinner date with his estranged daughter. Anyway, back to the job. During a parade, he thrusts his hips way too vigorously and so injured himself. Something's wrong with Barry. Never use my mortal name in public. While undergoing a hip replacement, Duff Beer set up a reality TV show in order to find the next Duffman. Homer entered and was crowned the winner. It's here where we see how the Duffman are sworn in. Afterwards, Homer is tricked into thinking he was injected with a chip to stop him from drinking beer. But as it turns out, it was just a placebo. Anywho, like many other jobs Homer's played before, he was a real natural in playing the character. 
but when he witnessed the misery Duff caused the consumers and the environment of Springfield, he found that he could no longer promote alcohol. Drinking beer is bad. At the next event, he switched out the regular Duff with the non-alcoholic Duff. Which is pretty pointless because as we saw when Homer visited the Duff Brewery a couple of years ago, it's the same thing. No matter how much Disney try and hide the gag from us with their aspect ratio. Cutting back, Homer was fired and Howard K. Duff VIII found Barry, who was now working in a coffee shop, and pleaded with him to return to the character. Duff man never took off his tights! And you know what, it seems that Barry Duffman was the strongest and will never stop the party, even in his old age. As 30 years into the future, old Mo is looking after the elderly Duffman who is still trying to party in his wheelchair. Also, I just thought I'd save a little tidbit to the end. Did you know that Hank Azaria, who also voices Duffman, has stated that he is the most difficult character to voice? And as a result, he often saves Duffman for the very end of the recording sessions. And so that completes the strange history of Duffman. And of course, a very special thank you to Dave Lee Down Under for helping me out with this video. If you enjoy my timeline videos, then you'll really love his evolution ones too. So please go and subscribe to his channel and tell him I sent you. The link for his channel is down in the description below. Finally, I'd like to say a big thank you to my newest Flying Hellfish members, Holly and Jason. Thank you so much for supporting the channel, it really, really does mean a huge amount to me. And of course, we've got the whole crew here too, meet the other Flying Hellfish members. We have Timothy, who else but Zane, Liam, One Drama Boy, Steve, Charlie, Sean, Andre, Stefan, Robert, Ashley, Glenford, Devin, Gadrag, Stephen, Edward, Anthony, Nicola, Jeffrey, Dominic, Cody, Jacku Star, Gameboss49, Chaz, Jeff, Gil, Shadu, Murray, Paul, Henry, Frank, Lucas Z, Omar, Eric, Thomas88, Dave, Samantha, Rally, Laurent, Alexander, Daniel, Charlie, Brendan, Bendy, Jessica, and Shivendra. 